Huge story here. Now to a potential breakthrough for millions of heart patients worldwide. Doctors in Switzerland now unveiling an experimental new drug to help treat heart failure that they say is more effective than anything that they've come up with so far. Dr. Debbie Nambiampirampal, she's an assistant professor of anesthesiology and rehabilitation at the NYU School of Medicine, and she joins us now with some more details on this. Now, we're being told that this is the most significant advancement in treating heart disease in 25 years. Do you believe that to be the case and what makes it so different? Well, I think it's exciting, especially for heart failure patients because the standard treatment, you know, it was helpful, but in this study, they actually compared the people on the new drug to the people who were on the standard treatment and they did so much better that they had to stop the study early. So that, that rarely happens, especially in a study of 8,000 people. Mm -hmm. uh, so the thing to understand to begin with is it's a study on heart failure patients. So heart failure is a little bit different. I mean, the problem there is that the heart can't pump the blood effectively enough to get it to the body. So it's getting kind of tired out. So people feel tired, they can feel short of breath, they can have leg swelling, problems like that. I mean, the best way to think about it, it's a little bit gross, but if you think of piping like uh, with your toilet bowl, the idea is that the heart's filling with, uh, with blood and then it pumps it all out at once to get it to the rest of the body. So it's kind of like when you press the flush and you know you get everything out. Yeah. Well, in heart failure, the heart can't pump out everything that it needs to. So the amount of blood that it's able to pump out is a lot less. The way that this drug works is that it actually helps your blood vessels to relax. So just kind of continuing on with the piping analogy, like, yes. you know, when you have a sink, you know, once it, the drain, once that piping gets kind of clogged, it's very hard for that sink to clear. Right. So it's the same idea that instead of uh, necessarily getting out all the junk, which might be cholesterol and stuff, you're just making the drain a little bit bigger. The pipes are getting a little bit bigger. And so that's the difference between this drug versus the one that was yeah. previously or still being used. Well, they kind of have the same, the same end result, which mm -hmm. is that they make the pipes bigger, but this one seems to be more effective at doing it. So it actually makes your blood vessels expand or and, relax so that the heart can pump more easily. More effective in terms of the people that were in this particular study. I mean, how significant is the difference in terms of people that are able to successfully use it? Yeah, so it was dramatic. So basically, this drug actually started out as a backup drug. If people couldn't take the standard, which was something called enalapril or an ACE inhibitor, if people had side effects from that, then they might have gotten switched to a drug in this class of medications. Now, what they did was they took this drug and they paired it with another drug. So essentially what it's doing is it's kind of using a couple different properties to be able to work a little bit better. Mm -hmm. And it was such a dramatic difference. I mean, the people in the group, they got hospitalized less. Their rate of death, you know, dying from heart failure was a lot less. Even their symptoms were better. So it was really dramatic on a lot of different levels. And does it seem to work the same across the board for, say, men and women, elderly patients, younger patients? Could, could all groups potentially use this? Well, it could be. I mean, there's different types of heart failure, so it can be caused from different things. I mean, most of the time we see it in people who've had heart attacks, so part of the heart is weak and it's having a hard time pumping. Now, in younger people, it could be different. It could be from infections or something else has damaged the heart. So this study really looked at more older people, you okay. know, kind of the more common reasons, but the way that it works would theoretically work for a lot of different people. I mean, yeah. it's a huge advance. You know, so. 26 million people across yeah. America and Europe suffer from heart failure yeah. every year. Exactly. So this could potentially affect a whole lot of people. Yeah, the hard part is that it's only going to be available probably in 2015 sometime because they have to go through the different process with the FDA and everything else. Yeah. But yeah. It's but sooner than it would have been before had exactly. they continued with the study. Dr. <laughs> Debbie, thank you so much oh, for joining us. Thank you. Nice to see Big you. Big information <laughs> thank people you. can use. Eric? Well, wow, that can really be a godsend.